How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, former good fella currently freezing his ass off in Canada. Back in the old life, I never saw snow. And I don't mean drugs. I delegated that to Big Blow Bellucci. I'm talking real snow. Jimmy complained about the cold. I want you guys to make it summer around here. Thought it was calling for a huge snowstorm. Not that I'm complaining. It worked. From now on, it's gonna be summer all the time. Except Christmas. I like a white Christmas, but warm. Capiche? I love New York in November. I look dolphin! <laughs> Palm trees in New York? If global warming means the end of the world, so be it. Hey, Rocco, that counts as a break. Now I live in Regina, where global warming ain't hit yet. It snows all the freaking time here. I mean, it never stops! Don't worry, Jimmy. I got your back. Cheech, what the hell you doing? There's too many snowflakes. I can't get them all. Tell them all I went down fighting. If you think I can even remember what summer feels like, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. What's her name? I don't know what you're talking about. What? <coughs> hey! Oh, you have been working out? Oh. Oh. Say hello to the devil when you meet him, you two-timing greaseball. <gasps> I just took the last soda. What? Ah. Jimmy, Cookie, for God's sake, the entire neighborhood can hear this hullabaloo. Jimmy's cheating on me, McCool. Let me shoot him. Cookie, I surveil Jimmy regularly, and I can assure you he's doing nothing of the sort. Though he did glance at a copy of Jug Lover's Quarterly at the gas station. Shame, shame. The feds won't forward my subscription. Don't you see? Cookie's busy with the kids, you're busy with your job. When's the last time you two spent some quality time together? Does drunk angry sex at 3 a.m. count as quality? It barely even counts as sex. Heed my words. Quality time is the key to a happy marriage. This from a bachelor whose best friend is a fucking horse. Cook, why would you think I'm cheating on you? Because you snuck out last night. I would have chased you, but the ambient was kicking in. I swear on the soul of my mother, that wasn't me. Then who was it? I don't know, but we're going to find out. Want to grill the kids? I'll get the waterboard. No, we got to catch them in the act. Like when Gina stole money from my wallet. She won't be doing that again. Look at you slaving away! How much is Dad paying you for this? Five bucks. Five bucks? You're getting screwed by the man. He's inside, nice and warm, and you're out here freezing your ass off for no money like a sucker. I like helping out. You're getting exploited. And so are all these other kids. <laughs> Sounds like you're developing a social conscience, Gina. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But I'll tell ya, if anyone's doing any exploiting around here, it's me. So it's Cheech sneaking around. Sorry I punched you in the face, Jimmy. I don't remember that. You were sleeping. That explains the loose tooth. Look at Cheech's clothes. In the old days, he only ever dressed up to pull a job. That knucklehead's gonna get us all in trouble. We better follow him. How are we supposed to do that if he's got the car? I know we're probably following Cheech on some depraved crime spree, but this is fun! This is what McCool was talking about. I got a bicycle seat up my ass. How exactly is this fun? Why didn't you just take Petey's bike? I thought this was Petey's bike. It's worse than we thought. Cheech is going into a crack den. Nah, nobody dresses up for a crack den. It's probably just a whorehouse. 
We gotta get Cheech out of there before he gets pinched. Let's do this nice and quiet. <laughs> ah, screw it. Let's just do it loud and mean. Yeah! Jimmy, what are you doing here? Me? What about you? You sneaking around for a dance class? Why didn't you just tell me? No offense, Jimmy, but I got a life outside of you, you know. This looks like fun. Jimmy, maybe ballroom dancing is just what we need to spend some quality time together. Why not? Beach riding bikes. May I have this dance? No, no, no. You cannot dance together. Your bodies are, how you say, incompatible. You are built like pickle barrel, and you are bag of oatmeal. Hey, you more suited to Juan Carlos. Nice to meet you, Juan Carlos. <laughs> oh, someone's a smooth talker. <laughs> you, what's his name? Name is Jimmy. I, Svetenka. Now dance me. Dance me long and hard. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. So, Gina, what is this union of yours gonna do for us? Suppose you hurt yourself shoveling, huh? Who looks after you? If your shovel breaks, who buys you a new one? Our parents? They're the ones who sent you out in minus 20 weather in the first place. Them grown-ups are playing you for stooges. Yeah! I shoveled Mrs. Wilson's place, and she didn't pay. Sign up with the Brotherhood of Snow Shoveling Youth, and she'll definitely pay. They'll all pay. Who's with me? Union! 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 Jackets are mandatory for members. 50 bucks a pop. What? 50 bucks? Gina, are you serious about organized labor, or is this just a cash grab? Don't worry, Petey. The jacket money comes out of wages. You won't even notice. And if I hear any more of that scab talk, I'll cut your fucking eyes out. That was freaking amazing! It was like I was on that show, dancing with the people who used to be stars. With Juan Carlos, I was dancing on a cloud of tacos and vending machine cologne. McCool was right about us spending time together. Except we didn't really spend any time together, because our bodies are, how you say, incompatible. Ah, she don't know what she's talking about. I'll prove it to you. Oh! Jesus, when's the last time we danced? Sorry. No problem. Let me think. Was it at a wedding? Oops! Nah, I got nabbed for that diamond ring robbery before our first dance, remember? What? Oh. My bad! Did you guys get electrocuted or something? Maybe oh. ballroom dancing ain't our thing. Well, if we can't dance together, there's no point doing it at all. I agree. Ballroom dancing is out. Good call. You look like a couple of seagulls fighting over a french fry. <laughs> Jimmy! Ah! I need you ride me, Jimmy. Ride me right now! Svetanka, no! I'm married! Ride me to dance studio. I am late! Oh, you mean drive it? Sure. You know, every time you talk, it sounds like a come on. It's Svetanka's accent. You know, Jimmy, dancing with you last night made me so wet. Okay, you really should stop talking now. What? You are a sweaty man. Come in for one dance. I don't think my wife would like that. You know you want to. We keep forbidden dance a secret. Come, Yemi. Again with the sexy talk. Jimmy? Care to tell me what you're doing here? <laughs> you're sneaking around behind my back, ain't ya? What are you flipping out for? I just came in for a quickie with Svetanka. Dance! Quickie dance! I thought we agreed ballroom dancing wasn't for us. Says the broad who's standing in a dance studio. I had to double cheech down here on Petey's bike. I popped in to use the washroom. You know what? Juan Carlos asked me to be his partner for the Golden Ballies. Well, you ain't touching no one else's Golden Ballies. It's a dance contest, you moron. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I'm gonna enter too. I just need to find me a dance partner. That's right. I'm gonna win them golden balls with Swatanka here. Oh, Jimmy, it is so on. It couldn't be honor. Jimmy, can I get a ride home? Cookie broke Petey's bike. <laughs> Where do you 
you think you're going? I got rehearsal. These tap shoes ain't gonna tap themselves. Well, I got rehearsal too, mister. Who's gonna stay home and watch Gina? Gina? She ain't even home. I ain't seen her in days. In that case, dibs on the car! I got no time for this. I gotta pick up sequins for my fancy pants. Wait, I just heard that. Catch you later, sucker! You come back here. Oh, man. All this dancing is really... <sighs> whipped me into shape. How you doing? I'm Gina, business agent for Bossy Local One. My comrade here says he performed snow-related labor for you, and you didn't pay. What gifts? I didn't know he was doing it. Didn't know? What, are you blind? Legally, yes. Can you see good enough to fish a freaking 50 out of your purse? I'm on a fixed income. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Things are tough all over. Now make with the money. In my day, we didn't... Well, your day's done, Stegosaurus. <whistles> Give it a snow job, boys. You want it cleared? That's another 50 bucks. <laughs> Ow! Ouch! I don't know how those ice dances sew these sequins on. By using a double top stitch. How many times I gotta tell you? I can't focus. Cookie's so competitive about this dance contest, she's driving me crazy! You want me to pull a Tonya Harding, take out a knee? Say the word, she'll never walk again. That's my wife you're talking about! Besides, I'm way ahead of you. I slashed the tires so she can't get to rehearsal. Isn't that your car, Jimmy? Yeah, but it's also her car. That's why you're the boss, Jimmy. Always thinking. Now give me some change for the bus. Uh, I entered this contest to stick it to your father, but he's really giving me a run for my money. You really want to win? You're gonna need an edge. Oh, Teresa Maria Falcone. This is just lewd, crass, and totally hot. Nice work. <laughs> this shouldn't bother me, because I grew up around Italians. But your dance partner is really greasy. He drinks olive oil. Says it keeps him young. He's actually 72. <laughs> oh, I ain't paying you jagoffs to stand around gawking. Get to work. Gina, I've been elected shop steward, and as such must tell you, the bossy membership feels they're not getting a fair shake. That's crazy. I'm paying five bucks a house. It's market rate. But you're charging our customers 50. What happens to the other 45? I think them fancy jackets pay for themselves. Teresa bought them, and you still haven't paid her back. I got a, a health and retirement plan to pay for. Them things don't come cheap. You know what else don't come cheap? Us. On behalf of the members of Bossy Local One, I hereby declare a strike. Yay! Just as soon as Brother Oliver has his potty break. Whoa, look at the balls on this room. I suddenly feel inadequate. I, I feel nervous. You nervous, Juan Carlos? Ha ha! Ha Do you even speak English? Ha 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 ha! Hey, Cook, geez, you look great. Just like one of them old-timey prostitutes. Aw, oh, Jimmy, thanks. Look at you. That costume makes me want to say, Olay. Jimmy, why you talk to old whore? <clears throat> oh, sorry, old whore is kooky. Eh, don't listen to her. I just wanted to wish you luck in the contest. And sorry I saw the heels off your dancing shoes. Thanks, babe. And I'm sorry I put horse laxative in your dinner. When'd you do that? <laughs> I gotta go! Jimmy. Way to go, Cheech! Wait, what did he say? Yimmy! We won second place! Uh. Hey! Get your Chernobyl licking tongue out of my husband's mouth! Is that what I think it is? It's these pants! They make me look huge! And like I'm pointing up!
Listen, Slotanka, you boinking my husband? Da. Oh, da means yes. What's the Ruski word for no? Nyet. That's it. I haven't boinked her. Nyet. You haven't boinked her yet? <laughs> well, have fun with your Russian floozy, you pig. What's wrong with you? You're gonna get me killed. Oh, you die for me. So romantic. No, I die because of you. You and I got no future, you understand? Forget future. Taste present. Ugh. Yeah. Present tastes like vodka and lip gloss. Look, get it through your skull. I ain't interested. Svetenka, no believe you. All right, then, I'm gay. Ooh, it's hot. I bring man to bedroom for Yimmy. How about Juan Carlos? <laughs> I watch. Yeah, my answer to that is... <laughs> Would you guys just get out of here? I need this crap. We are not leaving until our demands are met. Fine, let's just settle this thing. You're willing to negotiate? Wow, I thought you'd just hire a bunch of scabs from the hobo jungle. Yeah, I tried that. Didn't turn out so good. It's cold. You want to have sex? So, there it is. I accounted for every day right down to the minute. You tell me, when could I have possibly slept with Svetanka? I know what I saw, Yimmy. Okay, fine. You got me. I've been riding it like a freaking tilt-a-whirl. I knew it! Wait a second. You'd never admit to something like that unless you're lying. And if you're lying, you means you didn't do it. Aw, oh, come here, you big lug. It's official. I will never understand women. <laughs> I vant you, signed Svetanka Gabadana Velianovich. Who was that? <gasps> Is that for me, you big sweetheart? Let's do that right now. Bring the bear. <laughs> What are you doing out there, you wacko? No more wait. It's time for sexy. <laughs> I told you before, I don't fool around on my wife, ever. Maybe this changed your mind. Oh! Swatanka, for the last time, get out of here! <laughs> and take your two perky friends with you. If Cookie finds out this broad stalking me, she's gonna go ballistic! She'll kill Svetanka, I'll be next, and a couple of the kids might get clipped in the crossfire. It'll be a bloodbath! But surely she won't blame you. You're an innocent victim here. Clearly you've never been married. And don't call me a victim. It makes me sound like a candy ass. Jimmy, don't you see? You're keeping a secret from your wife. That's just as bad as cheating. Again, clearly, you've never been married. Cookie's your partner for life. Are you gonna start with that quality time crap again? Cause that's what got me into this shit show. I know this is highly implausible considering your background, but I think you should tell the truth. You think? All right, today's as good a day to die as any. But just to be safe, I'll take Svetanka into protective custody in the morning. For Canada, where most men would pay to be stalked by hot Russian girls. Where you been? Seeing McCool. Don't worry, he'll corroborate. Look, you and me gotta talk. What's up? You know Swatanka? Yeah? What about her? She's been stalking me. Here we go. Oh boy, thanks for the crappy advice, McCool. Well, I can't say I blame her. You're not mad? Oh, I'm gonna slice her up later. But I ain't mad at you. You didn't do nothing. What was that? Whoa, this is just like that movie where the crazy stalker broad cooks the rabbit. Oh, God. You, you think she's in the house? Hell, I bet she's right behind us. Yeah. What? I'm making beans. Oh, won't you budge on anything? Hey, hey, hey. I gave you a 2% wage increase over 10 years, didn't I? What 
It's taken so long. Those kids are still on the picket line. Mary's got frostbite. Oliver's crying for his blankie, and I don't even know why I'm still there. You know what? Running a union is too much hassle. I'm out. Oh, no, you're not. You have a responsibility to those kids. Don't make me sick the labor board on you. Grow up, Petey. I already paid him off. Speaking of which... What's this? You and Teresa's cut of the money I made off the scam. Count me in! Um, I don't know. I don't think I can... And I just sold out. Hey, Petey broke his cherry! Is Fetenka can't have Yimmy? No one can. I never understood that about stalkers. You love the guy, so why kill him? It's stupid. So, I kill you first? Did I say stupid? Let me rephrase that. Svetanka, you're never gonna have me, so you might as well just kill us. <gasps> but before you do, can I have one last dance with my wife? Da, one more time you flop around like puppets, then I shoot you. <laughs> Like circus bear box and kangaroo. <laughs> now that's what I call dancing. Jimmy, you're a genius. Well, I got my moments. Yeah! Jimmy, look out! Gina, good job. Beat! Why'd you hit Cheech? Yeah, I was on a roll. Ha! You get the quick line. I'll chop her up. See, isn't this nice? We're doing stuff together. It's quality time, just like McCool said. Good news, Jimmy. Svetanka's visa has expired. We can deport. Oh, God, is she dead? Nah, but give us five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Which one's the button again? Ah, there it is. Hey, how you doing? I'm Chief Falcone. Well, McDougal. I got the alias in witness protection because of my nephew, Jimmy. I don't like it, but I had no choice. So there's a contract out on me. Big deal. I mean, maybe I spilled a few secrets to anyone who listened, but there's a lot of other secrets I'd never tell a soul. Like the fact that we faked the moon landing. We were the ones that shot Dick Cheney's friend in the face. And we took the weapons of mass distraction out of Iraq. Someone got the memo wrong, but still, us. So, anyway. My nephew's gonna straighten things out with Don Gambini, whose first name, oddly enough, is Don. So if he wanted, he could call himself Don Don, which I would do. I mean, how cool would that be? Cheech don't mean no harm. He's just a little light in a cranial region. I got nothing to worry about. Jimmy will get me off the hook. Maron! Don Don's a pancake. Then the mob tried to kill us. Jimmy ratted everyone out to the feds, and we wound up in Regina. Vagina? No, wait, you were right. But if you think that's gonna stop me from shooting my mouth off, you can just... What is it? I forget what it is. Forget about it! That's the one! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the Gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war. <coughs> okay, 12 nothing. Hey, Ma, I just saw Petey upstairs with one of them magazines where nobody's got no clothes on. What? Peter Frampton McDougal, you stop right now. No son of mine is washing with the devil's hand, so... All right, that worked. She's gone. Listen, I got a line on something big. Really? Sounds big. First things first. Every time I hatch a scheme, you two Gavones cut me out. Not this time. Either I'm in all the way, or I keep this to myself. Isn't she cute? Playing hardball like her old man. Okay, it's a deal, sweetie. All right. You know Al Capone, eh? Only the architect of modern crime. I love his work. Truly an inspiration. Well, he ran a bootlegging operation from a town near here. He dug all these tunnels to hide from the cops, and that's where his famous secret vault is. You kidding me? What's this town called? Moose Jaw. Look, Gina, there's no town called Moose Jaw. It's just a crazy made-up name, like Albuquerque. 
What do you know? The kid's onto something. There's one thing I don't get. What's that? Fractions, Jimmy. I never understood fractions. Hey, Anna. What's wrong? I'm just feeling down because no one ever asks me out. How do I get someone to ask me out? Sorry, I have no frame of reference. Well, of course not. You can get any guy you want without even trying. Heck, I even get guys I don't want without even... Yamahama, who's that? Oh, his name is Johnny. Can't talk, lusting. Okay, bye. Hey. Hello? Is somebody there? There sure is. I'm Teresa. Teresa. From Mr. Henderson's class. You've shown up twice in getting straight A's. Guilty as charged. Wanna frisk me? No, thanks. What's wrong with you? I'm hot. Are you blind or something? Hello? Oh, thank God. You can't see. I thought it was me. Yep. Lucky you. How about you and I... Uh... This is weird. I usually seal the deal with hay. Sorry, no offense, but I like women with brains. Ideas, something going on upstairs? Come on over to my house. We'll get something going on upstairs. Oh, so it's not enough you blind people get all the best parking. Now you think you're too good for me? Well, I'm too good for you, mister! Who am I kidding? I am so in love. I'm starting to enjoy these clandestine meetings, Jimmy. The subterfuge, the intrigue, the covertness of it all. Me too. And by the way, if Cookie ever asks, we meet here every night. Anyway, I need permission to go out of town. Impossible. Your witness protection agreement strictly forbids it. But it's really important. Important? How so? Um, all right, I'll level with you. Cheech built himself a rocket. He's always been a, what do you call it, amateur rocket. Rocketeer, yes. So, we was gonna go out to the woods and launch the thing. We don't want to do it in the city and blow our cover. James McDougal, I know you well enough to know when you're telling a lie, and frankly, this one is a doozy. All right, you got me. We just want to go to Moose Jaw. We hear the tacos are pretty good. Moose Jaw? That's hardly out of town. It's just down the road, practically a suburb. Permission granted. For Canada! And naming cities when you're drunk! What are you doing? I'm in love with the blind guy, so I'm trying to learn sign language. Ah. Uh... But it's useless. I should just forget about him. He only dates smart girls. I faked a lot of things in my life, but never smart. All right, Petey. I searched your room, the attic, and the garage. Where's the pornography? Mother, I don't have any pornography. Don't give me that. If you've got porn, you're a pervert. And if you don't have porn, then why the hell don't you have porn? Because boys your age have porn. That's not to say I don't know my way around a woman's body. Ew. What I don't get is how the kid knows where Capone's vault is. I told you, I'm only doling out information on a need-to-know basis. This kid, she kills me. Al Capone's tunnels. I'm impressed, and I'm not easily impressed. Hey, look. Cows. What? Cows? Whoa, would you look at that? Cows, Jimmy, look. Jimmy. Just being in the same place Al Capone hung out has got me all excited. I've been excited since we pulled out a vagina. Yeah, me too. So let's get to it already. Crack open a sewer cover, let's find them tunnels. Tree, please? <clears throat> all right, we're in. All right, you mugs. I'm your tour guide, see? You do as I say, see? One wrong move and you get it, see? <laughs> Who does this punk think he is ordering us around? Take it easy, it's part of the show. Let's start the tour, see? This way to Al Capone's tunnels, see? If he says see again, I'm blowing his head off. Did Capone dig these tunnels himself? No, they were dug by Chinese immigrants working under terrible conditions. Terrible, I tells ya. Did the Chinese then use these tunnels to deliver food? Pull back. The bolt should be somewhere around here. Again, how does she know all of this? Shut your pie hole and make yourself useful. <laughs> Careful, my soft spot. It's this one. For the last time, how the hell does she know all of this? Al Capone's treasure. Get ready to be rich! Whoa! It's actually Al Capone! This is unbelievable. That's it? 
That's the treasure? What a f***ing rip-off! We go through all this trouble, and what do we get? Jewels, cash, gold? No, a stinking Al Caponcico. Hey, a little respect for a dead homie. Oh my God, you're alive! Oh my God, you're fat! Hey, is that nice? I thought we were having a state in the obvious contest. Who the heck are you, Muggs? I'm Jimmy. This is my Uncle Cheech. I'm your biggest Jimmy, Mr. Uncle. I'm Gina. I'm the one who sprung ya. You're a legend to us gangsters everywhere, Mr. Capone. Thanks. Why don't you call me Al? So, fellas, we back in business? Uh, the short answer is no. The word no makes me sour, Jimmy. Give me the long answer. Well, for starters, it's the 21st century. You pulling my leg? I got into that contraption in 1932. I was facing hard times, see? One day, my associate Frank Nitty found a hobo who looked just like me. It was like looking in a mirror, see? So I offered him a thousand beans to do my time for me. This egghead who made booze for me invented a freezing machine. He wanted to use it to freeze cats up, but I had another idea. Thaw me when they paroled a hobo. Ah! I wonder what happened to that fella. So you two are gangsters, eh? I could use a couple of mugs like you. I'm gonna start over, she. You two are getting in on the ground floor. It's the second coming of Al Capone. How does two grand a year sound? Really? You want us to work for you? You're darn tootin'. First things first, we gotta find a supplier for our whiskey. Uh, booze is legal now. They repealed prohibition. Damn that, Roosevelt. You get his. Well, they're still gambling girls all sorts of rackets. Stick with me, boys, and know what I'm doing. You are 11 kilometers from Regina. This gal sounds like a real dish. Thanks, little lady. What do you say we meet up over Manhattan, and I'll tell you a thing or two? Prepare to exit right. Fine, be that way. Boy, 21st century dame sure can give you the hi-hat. Your face feels very handsome. Teresa, I'm supposed to do that to see what you look like. Oh. Oh, right. What's your finger reading? Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Born in Stratford on Avon? You know, that's where makeup comes from. Teresa, look, I'm flattered, but when it comes to girls, it's what's inside that counts. I don't care about looks. Oh my god. You're into fat chicks. I'm sorry. Oh yeah? Well, as the saying goes, turn me down once, shame on me. Turn me down twice, Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, I present to you, Mr. Al Capone! Nice to meet you, Mr. Capone. I'm Bonnie, and this is Clyde. Over there is Amelia Earhart. <laughs> Something tells me she's giving me the business. Let's break out the good china before John Dillinger gets here. I am so sorry about that, Al. Hey, if I weren't me, I wouldn't believe I was Al Capone either. Now be a doll and fix me a gimlet, will you? I have no idea what a gimlet is. Well, kid, once we're back in business, I'll teach you to mix a hundred different drinks. You know, she'll make a good cigarette girl. I ain't gonna be no girl in short skirts for nobody. I got bigger plans. You got moxie, kid. All right, I'll find something for you in the organization. Stick with me and you'll be Charlie Potatoes. Now you're talking my language. Here, have a beer. Beer in a can? How do you like that? How do you open this thing? Can you believe this? We're gonna work for Al Capone! You think the Mountie will let us do that? We don't need him. We'll be big shots in the new Capone organization. We'll be on opposite sides of the law like nature intended. Oh, wait. We can't work for Capone. He'll find out I was a rat and he'll deal with me the Chicago way. Well, uh, what does that mean? He's gonna kill you with a lot of wind? I'm talking a baseball bat to the head. He can't ever know. And the only way to make sure he never finds out is to tell him we can't work for him. Damn. Come on, Jimmy. He's a stand-up guy. If he learns it straight from you, he'll respect your honesty. Have I ever steered you wrong? How can you even say that with a straight face? <laughs> What's wrong? Blind boy is treating me like a stereotype. He can't see how hot I am, so he thinks there should be more to me. I said, duh, you just need eyes. Then he got all mad, stormed off, and fell into a fountain. For starters, maybe you should stop calling him blind boy. Okay, fine. But how do I snare this blind boy? I mean, 
cripple. First, go back to blind boy. Second, stop trying to act smart. Stop acting anything. Just be yourself. I don't know what that means. Well, if you don't know, how's he supposed to know? I found this in the bathroom. Tell me something, Petey. When Jesus comes back, do you want him to see you abusing your body like that? Do you want our Lord and Savior standing over you while you're slapping the salami like some kind of depraved zoo monkey? Mom, it isn't- oh, you expect me to believe that, do you? Well, just know this. Whenever you think you're alone, Mama's watching. That won't cause problems later in life. All right, Jimmy, if we're gonna run a 21st century business, I need to learn your 21st century gizmo. Show me something. Listen, Al, there's something I gotta tell you. What's this? It's a cellular telephone, but Al- a telephone? How do you like them apples? Operator, get me Klondike A21. Hello? Hello? That's Chloe Dame sleeping on the job. Al, I really got it. Look at that! You got moving pictures in your living room. It's called a television. But Who's your colored kid talking? He's the President of the United States. I like you, Jimmy. You make me laugh. Look, Al, I gotta tell you something. Cheech and me, we thought it over. And we can't work for you. Come on, Jimmy, you can't back out now. I need you. It's just that I done some terrible things. We all done terrible things. That's what makes us so good at our jobs. No, but this one's really, really bad. Even you wouldn't approve. Come on, Jimmy. You think I didn't do stuff I wasn't proud of? I once shot my boss's dog. I had to. I shot my boss and the pooch shot the whole thing. Now, come on. Tell your Uncle Al what you did. Well, promise you won't get mad? I give you my word. You no good stool pigeon! You gave me your word! I don't gotta keep my word to you, she. You're a squealing little squealer, you low-down rat. Not the words I choose, but yes. But you said you needed me, Al. You call me Mr. Capone. There's rules in this racket, and you broke them, she. Damn it! Mr. Capone, come on. Don't do this. Go ahead and shoot, because I won't rest until you pay for what you've done. I can't do it. Then I'll be back for blood. Uh, your blood. Yeah, no, I got it. Hey, Jimmy. Don't sneak up on me like that! It's just me. What do you mean, just me? Did he tell you to say that? What's wrong with you? Al Capone's trying to kill me. Jimmy, I put up with a lot. But give me a break. That guy is not Al Capone. Yes, he is. We went through these tunnels in this other city and found him cryptomagnetically frozen. What? You went out of town and he didn't take me? Where's Uncle Al? He's not your uncle, but if you see him coming, whistle twice and throw Cheech in front of me. Gina, switch seats. I want my back against the wall. Pop, that was a car backfiring. Sounded like a shot. I know the difference. Look, Pop, for the record, if it comes down to it, I'm on Capone's side. I don't blame you, kid. With me out of the way, you're gonna need a father figure. Jimmy, this can't go on. You're hiding in like a little girl. No offense, Gina. Up yours. You're intimidated by the fact that he's a legend. Think of him as just a guy who puts on his underwear one hole at a time. You're right. He's just a guy. I can take just one guy. Hell, I could take ten guys. In a fight, I want to be clear on that. Interesting outfit, Jimmy. Shh. You hear that? What? What is it? It's too quiet. I don't like this. What are you talking about? needed a city map. Check out the water slide. It's a lot of fun. Eat up, men. There's plenty more where this came from. Boy, this is the best barbecue sauce I've ever eaten. Who made it? I did. I got the recipe from Barbecue Bill. What's in it? What's in it? Why, I'll tell you the recipe. When Barbecue Bill left the Mounties, he handed it down to me. 
A little of this, a little of that, a piece of old shoe, a part of a hat. Mix together and eat your fill, said old barbecue bill. <laughs> Who could this be from? You gotta help me, McCool. Someone's trying to kill me. My God, who? Al Capone. I left my Mountie barbecue for this? I'm serious. We found him underground in Moose Jaw in a big block of ice. Now he's out there stalking me and he wants my blood. Hmm, this is indeed serious. We must get you to safety before Al Capone finds you and does his worst. There, there, Jimmy. We'll find a safe haven for you. Thanks, McCool. I know I could count on you. Ah, knock on that you can't lock me up! He'll get to me in here! Nothing stops this guy! This is for your own good, Jimmy. Obviously, the strain of relocation has gotten to you. The doctor assures me that a strenuous regimen of enemas and testicular electroshock will put you right in no time. Yo, no one's zapping my boys. You're too far gone to realize it, but I am your friend, and I will see you through this. Pipe in some Kenny G to soothe the poor man. to talk. <sighs> Teresa, please. Put down your bumpy book. I got something to say. All right. What is it? You will write about me. The truth is, I don't know who I am. I look to other people to define myself like some crazy one-way mirror. And I'm always afraid that if I don't live up to what they want me to be, they'll ignore me or not pay any attention to me at all. Wow. Underneath the makeup, the fashion, the unbridled sexuality, you're just a scared little girl. And you're the first boy I've ever met who wants to know that girl. Oh, Teresa, come here. Yamahama, who's that? Doc, I'm fine. As soon as they come, now you gotta let me out of here. Yeah, all right, Jimmy boy. You outsmarted. Yeah. Come with me if you want to live. I thought you was on Capone's team. What am I gonna do? You're my pops. Besides, Capone's broke. He's a schmuck. Nurse, you gotta help me. Someone's trying to kill me. Oh, crap. I got an apple to peel with you, Buster. Al. Be reasonable. I'm wearing a dress. Reason went out the window days ago. We have a code, see? And you broke that code. Hold on. According to the code, if someone saves your life... Hold on. I got it right here. If someone saves your life, you have to recipro... Recipro... Sound it out, honey. Reciprocate. It means never try to kill them. Let me see that. Well, what do you know? Can't argue with the code. Well, I guess we're even. Put it there, Pally. Thanks a lot, Al. Let's dust out of here. I guess this is where we part ways. But what will he do? Where will you go? Every time there's a buck to be made for illegal hooch, I'll be there. Every time a lonely young girl comes to the big city for the first time, I'll be there to force her into prostitution. Every time a truck leaves a warehouse full of valuables, by God, Jimmy, I'll be there. Goodbye, Uncle Capone. So long, Al. Oh. Come now, Jimmy, we've got to make you sane. Doctor, fire up the electroshock room. Jimmy, drop your pants. Uh, uh. How you doing? It's me, Gina. Yeah, I'm driving. I'm not wearing a seatbelt, neither. Blow me. Before Pops became the fattest stool pigeon in history, he was my hero. If there was an award for Father of the Year, Pop would have got it. Don Francesco says hello. <laughs> <laughs> then this happens. So I look at the FBI guy and say, you stinking feds can blow me. I ain't testifying against nobody. Then the man from the feds says, but the mob is going to kill you and your whole family, Jimmy. You with me so far, kid? I get it. You're turning rat. Just wait. There's more. If you testify, we can give you immunity. 
Do you know what immunity means? Enough with the fucking puppets! <laughs> oh! Now, Pops is the puppet, and the feds are the ones pulling the strings. This is the thanks I get for saving all your lives. And if you don't think I'm better off dead than living in Canada's icy butt crack, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. You clowns think you can avoid me? We have nap time together every day. Now cough it up. The new kid already took our money. What are you little crap stains trying to pull? Who's this new kid? <sighs> Just give me another wedgie and let me go. Another wedgie? <laughs> Who gave you the first one? Ah, oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah! Hide behind the skinniest statue on Earth, dumbass. <laughs> Looks bad, but for once, I'm innocent. I think the furnace is on the fritz. What's 10 degrees in American? Don't know. Depends on the exchange rate. Apologies for the intrusion, but I'm here to save the day. What's with the pantyhose? It's a unitard. I'm Maple Man. Maple Man? Canadian superhero? Fighting minor infractions and belligerents everywhere? You look unitotted, Captain Leaf. <gasps> Teresa, why are you dressed up as Sapling Girl? Maple Man's trusty sidekick, who's always getting him out of sticky situations? I'm just wearing what they gave me for my job as a booth babe at Regina Comic Con. <gasps> Do you know what this means? Of course not. You'll be working with Bentley Withermoon, the renowned actor who plays Terrence Timber, AKA Maple Man. Sounds like a lot of nerds. I better bring my pepper spray. Teresa, you have to introduce me to him. So much of my belief system is based on the teachings of Maple Man. Well, it's a hundred bucks for an autograph, 300 for a photo, or a thousand to brush his hair. I have to go sell my stamp collection. Hey, can I borrow your brush? Gina. You have irreparably damaged school spirit here at Celine Dion Elementary. Don't worry, our hearts will go on. The only place that'll accept you now, my dear, is Our Lady of Peace School for Wayward Girls. Not the nuns. No! Anything but the nuns! That's right. Enjoy that juice while you still can. <laughs> the only snacks the nuns will give you are warm holy water and scale body of Christ. Yummy! <gasps> Thank you for coming, Mr. McDougal. I came as soon as I got your call. You got a real sultry phone voice. Well, I'm afraid Gina's in a great deal of trouble. Your fancy skeleton statue nearly crushes her, and she's the one in trouble? You got a lot of nerve, Professor. Next thing you know, she'll be blaming you for this hat that I stole off the special ed kid. Well, we talked her down to a one-day suspension. Pretty good for your old man, huh? Just wait till I get my hands on that kid who framed me. Knock out his teeth for me, will you? I miss reading Rainbow for this. Five seconds and I'll be shaking hands with a syndicated television legend. Okay, that's it for today. Maple Syrup Man will be back tomorrow. For some reason. Teresa! Teresa! Introduce me! Uh, Tabitha, I had some notes regarding your booth babing skills. Shall we discuss them over a drink? Sorry, I left my fake ID at home. <laughs> Don't worry. No one asks for ID in my hotel room. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm really tired from wincing at people's breath all day. Most girls in your position would leap at the chance to get a few tips from an industry veteran. Sorry you were in the war, but thanks anyway. See you tomorrow! Teresa, you gotta introduce me to- Buzz off, nerd! <laughs> Oh, Katie! Ah, ah, I didn't recognize you in your pajamas! Ah! Can I 
What's your question? Shoot. You ever worried at... I said shoot. Come on, it's your turn. Oh, right. <laughs> you missed. What a loser. Cheech, you ever worry things are slipping out of your control? Yeah, but I got special underpants for that. It's this mystery kid at school. He's haunting me, and I don't even know what he looks like. The kid without a face? How am I supposed to sleep now? Let me tell you, Francis Bacon once said... No, wait, it was Kevin Bacon. He said, knowledge is power. Yeah, I should snoop around, find out who this kid is. Good idea, Cheech. Oh, and if you call me a loser again, I'll slice your fucking nuts off. Boom! You're tough, but fair. <laughs> Get the file on the new kid and check the teacher's lounge for snacks. Not in that order. What the hell is this? In case you gotta hack into the mainframe or some shit. Hey, why is my locker open? What the hell is this? It's a picture of the best summer of my life. <gasps> Carmine! I'm back! Oof. That's for getting me suspended. Not that I care, but still. And that's for breaking Celine Dion. What was that for? That's because I missed you. I'm impressed. Must have took a lot of determination to track us down. You know, your pop killing my pop and all, it, it gets you out of bed in the morning. That, and I wanted to see you again. Muscling in on my marks was a nice touch. And you're short. Shut up! I grew one and a quarter inches since last summer. I mean on the vig, you chiseling mook. I got expenses. Taking a cab all the way from Brooklyn wasn't cheap. The meat is still running. You want to lift to your house? What was I, born yesterday? Come on, I'm going to find Cheech sooner or later. Hopefully sooner. These vendettas take a lot out of you. Well, good luck finding him. The guy's a phantom. He lives in the shadows and moves as silent as a warm breeze. Hurry up, Gina. Cheech Falcone is getting bored. Anyway, Carmine, I ain't gonna make getting the Cheech easy for you. I wouldn't want you to. Last time I had any real fun was when you and me mixed it up at camp. You mean when I kicked your ass? How do you know I didn't let you kick my ass? And the gloves are off. <laughs> if you say so. I left your juice box and some crackers. See you soon. You backstabbing son of a whore! Open this door right now and I'll let you keep some of your limbs! Fruit punch. What's she doing here? Replacing someone who doesn't know how to play ball. Oh, I know how. Just not with yours. Sadly, Tabitha, you lack the talent to portray a convincing sapling girl. Like it takes talent to have a unitard jammed up your butt. I'll have you know I majored in unitards at Juilliard. Come on, Petey. Let's get away from Doctor Who wants me to touch his wiener. But I sold my stamp collection. I told you the furnace wouldn't fix itself. Now the toilet water's frozen. I know, I've been chipping yellow ice all night trying to get my cell phone out. Chase dropped a deuce and it's just sitting there, mocking me. That's it, I'm calling the repairman. Is Cheech here? Nope. Damn it! Between you and me, you don't really like Cheech much, do ya? What are you talking about? He's great! I mean, he's all right. He means well. Actually, he does it, but he's my uncle! What do you want? But if he wasn't around no more, we'd be okay, right? Maybe you would, but who the hell would I hang out with? What, did you kill him? How'd you do it? Me and Ma have a bet. <laughs> Holy crap! I was kidding around! You did kill him! Jesus Christ, Gina! I didn't touch him! I haven't seen him since last night! <laughs> it's all my fault! Kid, relax. I saw him an hour ago. He went to them Nerd Olympics with Teresa. Why do you think he was dead? I'll tell you on the way. Come on. And I wasn't crying. What do you mean you can't get here for two days? It's so cold, I can see Cheech's breath. I thought Comic-Con was gonna be a comedy show for convicts, you know? Where every punchline is, don't drop the soap. <laughs> you know who should be in prison? Bentley Withamoon. He almost was, three times, but he always got off. It's ironic, nothing sticks to Maple Man. Why are you sticking up for him? The guy's a pig. He's not a pig. 
He's the product of the forbidden love between man and maple tree. You just can't see the real him past your nerd boner. By the way, you should wear a jock under that costume. Man, I ain't seen so much butt crack since we extorted the plumber's union. Maybe there was something else you did wrong? He fired me because I wouldn't put out! What? Guy sounds like a creep. No respect for the ladies. Yo, space jugs! Let's see if I can come in peace. Cookie, shame on you for even thinking of calling a repairman when you have me. A housewife? Alone? A repairman? Oh, that reminds me of a dirty movie I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? Strange. Ah, there's nothing like using your hands to bring back the heat. Good thing I brought my big tool. That was a line in the movie. <gasps> Did you have a repair? I don't know what you're referring to, Cookie. I'm just here to perform some sweaty, dirty work. That's another line! Ah, you're the Randy Repairman! Damn my gambling days. I knew that video would come back to haunt me. Sir, can I see your wristband? Ah! <laughs> How is this the first I'm hearing about Gambini's kid? What, I gotta tell you every little thing? You do when our lives are at stake? What if he squealed on us to the mob? Then we'd be having this conversation in hell. The day Cheech gets taken out by a six-year-old, I'll eat my shirt. Well, get ready to choke down some polyester, because this kid's the real deal. Got a little crush there, kid? Yeah. I mean, no! Shut up, dumbass! All right, to be continued. Now, let's find Cheech quick before we wind up relocated to Yellow Horse or White Knife or some fucking place. <gasps> God, you can almost smell the virginity in here. Hello? I'm down here. How you doing? I'm Gina's friend. That's funny, because Gina doesn't have any friends. Oh, you calling me a liar, Gina's mom? Nobody calls me a liar. Where do you get off? What, did somebody drop a deuce in your cereal this morning? Get dried up old floozy? Oh, yeah, okay, now it makes sense. Come on in and wait for her. So, what's a guy got to do to get some milk and cookies around here? Oh, you're a hungry little spark plug, ain't ya? <laughs> yeah, hungry for revenge. <laughs> Good one. Hello? Cookie? Nice to finally meet you, Cheech. You're bigger than I imagined. Has everyone seen my movie? Who wants cookies? Hey, where'd you go? Ah! Oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> hey, you're not Cheech. No shit, you little monster. Ah, Jesus, McCool! Oh. Ah. Where did it go? Where did it go? It's gone. <gasps> Hold me, Randy. Tighter. Cookie, get a hold of yourself. Who was that crazed demon child? It was Gina's friend. Oh, that explains a lot. But why was he have to cheat? I don't know. Let's go down to the comic book convention and ask him. A comic book convention? And I get to kill Cheech? Double win! Gah! Jeez, I hope Pop's having better luck finding Cheech than I am. <clears throat> Oh, Gina! That's for locking me in my locker. Thanks for the snacks, though. Hey, can I ask you something? Say you do off Uncle Cheech. What next? Oh, I got plans. I want you and me to run away together. Hit the open road like Bonnie and Clyde. You want to get gunned down in slow motion at the end of an old movie? No, I mean the bank robbing parts. But none of the kissy parts. Ew, you're gross. Maybe the huggy parts. Don't get your hopes up, sicko. But look, do you really gotta kill my uncle? Of course I do. Good luck finding Cheech in this joint. The man's a master of disguise and concealment. He could be standing right behind me and you'd never know. Go, Gina, spot your uncle Cheech a couple of bucks for a slice, will you? Damn it! I've been looking for you, mister. Not another one. Look, Junior, I know what you're thinking. But I ain't your father. Holy crap, you're even dumber than the legends. Time to put you out of my misery. Yo, look at 
everybody! It's a midget from Game of Thrones! <laughs> Funny, huh? They never look as tall in person. But this is official police business! Let me in! Not until I see a wristband, sir. Can we wrap this up soon, Sugar Cheeks? Oh! I'm getting right as cramp. Hold! What's the meaning of this, you me wannabe? In season one, episode four of The Adventures of Maple Man, you vow to stand against injustice, no matter where it occurred, even if the hour was late and the location less than convenient. If you want to quote the show to me, that's an extra $60. Silence! Maple Man stands for fairness, equality, and decency. You stand for none of those things, you egocentric, misogynist hypocrite! How dare you! How dare you, sir? You have no right to fill the sacred Maple Man unitard. Security! Sure, hide behind your goons. Oh, hi, Jetsy. Ah! Maple Man, thank God you're here. I fell through this table. Uh, would Cheech McDougal please proceed to the information desk? That's the big table near the front door. If you get confused, tell a grown-up you're lost. Uh, over and out. Well, if it ain't Jimmy Falcone. Oh, come on! Look at you, excuse me! Teach McDougal, do not come to the information desk! Repeat, do not make up your mind! Gee, kid, you got the same psychotic spark in your eye as your old man. I also got his propensity for violent blood-soaked revenge. And his inability to whistle. Kid, look, I owe you a huge apology. I'm sorry for what happened with your pops. He was a, well, I won't say a good man. He was a man. Let's leave it at that. You call that half-ass tap dance an apology? You murderized him! He was gonna kill my uncle, then I would've had to kill him back, so we skipped this step. But don't take it out on Cheech. I'm the guy you want. Don't worry. I promised Gina I'd never touch you. Who's worried? But that's nice. She's a good kid. Oh, she's great! Easy there, Romeo. But listen, you kinda already got your revenge on me. How do you figure? Look at me. Look around you. I'm living like a schmuck here. I mean, my life ain't bad, but it's a far fucking cry from good, know what I mean? Oh, uh, for Christ's sake, for the last time, kid. I never bend your mother. <sighs> Let me tell you something, you ignominious little snot stain. I am a classically trained actor. If it weren't for all the money I make and during these weekends with you halitosis-ridden cretins, I'd never be caught dead in this asinine outfit providing masturbatory fantasy fodder for overgrown adolescent twerps! And furthermore, I hate Canada, and Maple Man can gobble my knob! <gasps> Did you get that, Teresa? He's a one-take wonder! And... post! I hate Canada, and Maple Man can gobble my knob! You look fat in that suit. Oh. Teresa! That's not nice. What? Bitch took my job. I told you I wouldn't make this easy for you, so you're gonna have to go through me. You know, for a guy you can't stand, you sure do seem to care a lot about Cheech. Trust me, this is killing me. I'm gonna regret it the next time he opens his mouth. Wait a sec. Does your mother do hoop waxes down at the Korean spa? See what I mean? <laughs> All right. I changed my mind about off and Cheech, but not about... What? That sounds mushy. So, spit it out. Nah, some things are better left unsaid. What are you, chicken? Shut up! I'm no chicken. You're a chicken! Yeah, yeah, I'm rubber, your glue. Just shut the f*** up and tell me! <sighs> I didn't change my mind about how much I like you. Um, I'm glad about that. And being glad... Hurts my face. You make my face hurt too, Gina. So, what do you say you and me shake down a couple of these booths? Why not? These dorks have been bullied all their lives. They know the drill. <gasps> You're under arrest for assaulting a police officer, young man. It's maximum security juvie for you. 
It'll be no picnic, my fine friend. Lights out by ten and only four hours of social media per day. McCool, wait! Aww. Aww. Guess I'll have to take a rain check. Guess so. But those blowjob screws won't keep me down for long. You gonna wait for me? Pah, screw that. That's my gal. Well, son, I hope you picked up some comics to read where you're going. For Canada! A dumping ground for American culture since 1867! I knew it! There is a more north! Yes, Jimmy, and this is where we'll be until I'm certain the elusive Carmine Gambini is no longer a threat. How soon did he give you the slip? Somewhere between the washrooms and the parking lot. That's my boy. Petey, did you see how many hits our Maple Man video got? Yeah, but look what they're calling it. Idiot fan pwned by Maple Man. I can't take this no more. I'm walking home. I'll just head south. How hard can it be? Which way is south? We're so far north, it's all friggin' south! Oh, God! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Saskatchewan, la 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 la